super uh, little thing that I kind of wanted to film really fast. I know it's gonna look different right now and that's because I don't have the studio lighting set up and all that stuff. In fact, right now you're seeing post-production producer Crystal <laughs> who has a lot of um, like Skype conference calls and stuff like that for my regular and normal job during the week. So I really just wanted to kind of get in touch with you guys and add this to my Bobby Mackey's video. I know that I was supposed to post it on Saturday, so what ended up happening if you don't follow me on social media? After I kind of discussed about how YouTube uh, was basically doing some strange things with the whole paranormal community, no one really knows what's going on. The good news is I found out it wasn't just the paranormal community, it's not just people that do vlogging for you know ghosts and spirits or um, UFO anything like that it's actually everyone that's being affected right now how do I know this actually some of the beauty bloggers I follow like Crispy's really big and there's a few other ones actually came out and said they were having similar issues with YouTube so the issues include things like I was taking it very personally. I thought that after I had kind of exposed uh, the paranormal problem with social media that my channel got attacked. The good news is most of my videos are now being monetized, so that did change. The bad news is for some reason, YouTube has rolled back my views on almost every single video. So basically within the first five to seven days of me posting a video, normally I will get between 3,500 to 4,500 views um, per video. That's on the lower end. Now when I do something bigger, like I'll have Bobby Mackey's posted or you know the Stanley Hotel or even the Cecil Hotel, those will get a lot more views. So for example, actually the first week with the Cecil Hotel, I had received about 20,000 views. For some reason, it rolled back then to about 15,000, then it rolled backwards to about 13,000, and then a few days ago it was down to like 1,300 or 1,500, so it's very strange. The concern I have is that when you've been vlogging or you know talking to you guys like I have with my regular channel for over a year now, you know consistently what you're going to see with your viewers about how many comments you get per video, how many likes you get per video. My issue isn't really about monetization or the money. I never did start YouTube for the money or for monetization because like I said, it's not really that much anyways. The reason I started my YouTube channel was not only to introduce myself as Ghost Girl, as my own character, as my own personality in Paranormal, but also to kind of build the community that we have going, knowing that I love the raw, organic, authentic side of paranormal and ghost hunting. So what I don't like is YouTube taking away my views and also subscribers because that is the number one important thing to me. I still have over a million views, which is good, but a lot of my videos, the numbers have been rolled back extremely far by the thousands. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. I can't tell you guys why. Many of you have reached out to me on other social media platforms like Twitter or Facebook and told me that you for some reason became unsubscribed to my channel and you don't know what happened. So it looks like there's something going on with YouTube and I'm actually losing my subscribers and they're not unsubscribing. It's almost like YouTube is removing my subscribers. I don't know why. I don't have an answer to this.
Now, if you get bored and you decide you want to kind of start researching this on your own, which is totally up to you, I will tell you that I know that a lot of advertisers have dropped out of YouTube and Google. Um, and I know like Johnson & Johnson and there's a couple other really big ones and that's because their ads were showing up on videos that should not have been monetized for the same rules that we've talked about with YouTube not monetizing certain videos. So basically what that means is as normal, someone wasn't doing their job properly that was working for YouTube, you know, making sure that the monetizations were done properly and in the long run, it affected the entire community of YouTube because advertisers eventually got mad and pulled out of YouTube and that's the issue that's going on. Obviously, it goes a lot deeper than that. Um, I'm just happy that I'm not the only one that's having these issues. To be honest, I did not post Bobby Mackey video last week because I actually took it very personal. I was really distraught um, last weekend because the one thing I don't want to lose, obviously, is you guys as my subscribers and my views because it's important. When you work as hard as I have for the last year and a half, I don't want to lose my viewers and subscribers. That's more important to me than any monetization or anything else could be. So I was really upset and I am so grateful to the other YouTubers that have come forward, not only privately to me, but publicly to their fan base. Like, Crispy, for example, has millions of followers, not only subscribers, but also on all of her other social media platforms. So if her as a beauty blogger is also being affected, it's all of us that this is happening to. For a minute, I did consider not doing any more uploads to YouTube. I might go back temporarily to just uploading once per week until we figure out what YouTube is doing, since nobody really knows, because currently, they are giving me whiplash with going back and forth and not having things straightened out. So without further ado, let me tell you about the time that I was at Bobby Mackey's. This is my normal video that I would have actually already pre-filmed this for you guys. Make sure everybody double checks that they're still subscribed to my channel because a lot of people have been mistakenly dropped off the channel. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to discuss something that I haven't talked about, I mean, I've, I've talked about it in pieces. I feel like it's a really good time to discuss this because most of my subscribers that have been on here for a while know the kind of investigator that I am. And honestly, I feel like the reason I didn't talk about this right away on the channel was because I wasn't wanting to promote other investigators to go there if necessary. So the topic of discussion for today is my experience at Bobby Mackey's, which is the club in Wilder, Kentucky. It's about an hour north of Lexington, and of course everyone knows this from, you know, the famous Ghost Adventures episode. I lost the pictures that I had taken there and I finally found them, and that's part of the reason I thought it was a good time to do this. So basically what happened was 2011, I believe. It may have it may have been 2012. After I was on Paranormal Challenge, I had made friends with a lot of people that were, you know, in the celebrity community of Paranormal. So I had decided to make a trip to go to Scarefest, which was in Lexington, Kentucky, and I was going to meet up with a bunch of my Paranormal friends. That same year, Zach and Aaron and Dave and a bunch of other people were there. And so, of course, I went and said hi to them, but I realized I was only about 60 minutes south of Wilder, Kentucky, and so out of nowhere, it was not planned, I decided to make a call to Bobby Mackey's, and I got a hold of Wanda, who used to be kind of, I don't know if she's really the caretaker, more of the tour guide person and historian, I got a hold of her on the phone. I basically called and said, hey Wanda, my name is Crystal, I was featured on Paranormal Challenge with Zach Bagans, I was the season finale winner, I would love to come up to Bobby Mackey's, is there any way that you'll be there today, and is it okay if I come up? I guess in my head I was hoping she would say no, but I thought if I'm this close to Bobby Mackey's, I have to make a trip there. I suppose I'm like any other investigator or paranormal enthusiast that wanted to know what it was about firsthand. To my surprise, Wanda was very wonderful and warm and was like, come on up. I had no equipment, I had no team, I had some friends with me, and we did do a semi 
informal investigation there with Wanda. So Wanda invited us up. I had no idea what I was in store for. I had thought that I had been to Jerome, which is very overwhelming because it was a hospital. I thought I had seen it all, and apparently I was wrong. There's a lot of different history online about Bobby Mackey's. Wanda has done some unbelievable finding archives, and I think she's written a couple of books. Wanda K is her name, so if you get a chance and you're wanting to know the actual precise history, I want you guys to order the books from Wanda because she actually went to all of the locations in and around Wilder to find out information regarding Bobby Mackey. So she has the accurate information. So while I was there, I decided um, to ask her about the history because at that point, um, even I think she'd found out more since Ghost Adventures had been there. I'm not gonna go into a super deep discussion, I'm just gonna kinda go over the basics about Bobby Mackey's with you guys. So the first thing that happened when I went into Bobby Mackey's was all of the females that were involved, which there was about a group of five of us, only two of us were female, we had to sign waivers with Wanda that said that we were not pregnant and that if we were lying and we were pregnant, that they were not responsible for anything that were to happen to us during or after the investigation. I kick myself every day for not taking a picture of that waiver that I signed just to show you guys. Of course, I don't have kids, so I wasn't pregnant, and so um, I was like, you know, uh, I am signing this, it's kind of a legal form, so, uh, Wanda, would you tell me why I'm signing this form? And she was like, ah, uh, we've had a lot of people that if you come in here pregnant and you're, you know, you're a female, you're gonna get hurt really bad. Like, you're gonna get shoved down the stairs. It's happened on several occasions. Currently, not just from old history. So I was like, great. By the way, since we're talking about Wanda, I'd love everybody to send her some good vibes. You can either literally do it on her fan Facebook page or just send her some good vibes because um, as far as January, she was fighting some sort of cancer. I'm not sure what. Um, so just send her some good energy because everybody deserves to you know, be a fighter through something tough like that. So Bobby Mackey's built in 1850. Originally, it was built as this tiny little slaughterhouse, okay? Uh, that sounds pretty basic, right? That's why there's like, come up out of that hole and get us. Yeah, those are like the draining wells for the blood of the animals for the slaughterhouse. But that's not everything that happened there. Basically, in 1850, when this slaughterhouse was originally opened, obviously that's surrounded by death in its own. The owners of the slaughterhouse, or whoever you want to call it, that was running it, butchers, I don't know, they were going to the local orphanage in and around Wilder, and they were abducting children as young as the age of like two and three. Basically, they would bring children to the slaughterhouse and chain them up and force them into child labor and slavery. Wanda told me that a lot of the children would help melt the lard, which is the animal fat, and sometimes, and it's very hot and heated, obviously, because it's burning it away. And sometimes the children, because they were little, they would fall inside of the lard and burn and melt away, literally instantly melt. And she said it happened a lot. So that's why they think there's a lot of children energies. And she says sometimes they've captured images or photos of children chained behind Bobby Mackey's, which is where the railroad tracks and the actual river runs. So that was pretty, that took me back when she told me about that. So basically these holes in, under Bobby Mackey's or the slaughterhouse at that time would take the blood and it would flow out into the river and basically get rid of, of the stuff that the butchers didn't want in the slaughterhouse. In the 1930s, at some point, it was purchased and it became what was called the Bluegrass Inn. Eventually, it was handed down to who knows how the ownership went at that point, and mobsters, gangsters came in, purchased the land and the property, turned it into not only a casino, but they also turned it into a nightclub slash, I guess, stripper bar, however you wanna call it. These mobsters ended up running 
the entire town of Wilder, Kentucky, according to Wanda. Um, they were paying off the police, they were paying off the judges in the court system, um, they were doing tax evasion, they were doing illegal things, and everyone let them get away with it because they would just pay people off with cash. So after the mobsters obviously owned this and, and moved on from it, on and off, it went in and out of being bars to biker bars to being vacant. It has kind of a strange history with how it was crossed on. But she did find archi archives that each time it was repurchased by someone, it was only purchased for a dollar, literally. From 1973 to 1977, it opened once again as another biker bar. There were several shootings where several people actually died, and that's when the town of Wilder came in and decided to completely shut it down. 1978, it was purchased and reopened as Bobby Mackey's Music World. Of course, we skipped over some important facts like there was a female named Pearl Bryan that was claimed to have been murdered and killed. Uh, this was 1896. Her head was never found, which is one of the songs. They found her body on the other side of the river. Of course, they didn't have DNA, autopsies, the things that they have today, so it was never figured out who did it, what did it, why it happened that way. They did discover that she was pregnant between four and a half to five months, I believe. It was also claimed that it could have been some sort of a satanic ritual when she was murdered and her head was thrown down the well. It is not a fact that the head was thrown down the well, might I add. Um, that cannot be proven nor disproven at this point. But they do know they couldn't find her head. I think the assumption was since her head was gone, it could have either been thrown in the river or down the well because Obviously, that was the sewage system for the slaughterhouse. There's been a sketchy past with Bobby Mackey's from going from you know, being an abandoned building to becoming these biker nightclubs where they believe that may they may have attracted sat satanic rituals that came in, people that were doing things and summoning things that they shouldn't be doing while it was vacated. We all know the story of Carl Lawson, who was actually the innkeeper, janitor, caretaker of Bobby Mackey's. Um, he believed that he had been possessed. He died in January of 2012. He was featured on Ghost Adventures. And then there's also a famous ghost called Johanna, which Bobby Mackey has written a song about. She was a stage performer, dancer, stripper who may have become pregnant. Robert Randall was the guy that got her pregnant. Johanna's father had him murdered. Johanna ended up committing suicide via poison. The odd connection with this one is Robert Randall is the one that got Johanna pregnant. Bobby's a Bobby Mackey's actual name is Robert Randall Mackey. Bobby Mackey for short. Is that a coincidence? It's believed that Johanna either killed herself in the dressing room via poison and you can still smell the scent of roses when she comes around. Okay, so now that we have the brief history of Bobby Mackey's, let's talk about what I experienced when I went in there. So when I first went in, obviously there's a sign in above Bobby Mackey's that you walk into that says you enter at your own risk and they're not liable for anything. You have to sign this waiver if you're a female. I'm not sure. I don't think that they have people that come into the actual nightclub to sign this waiver. I think she had us sign this because we were going to be going to other sections of Bobby Mackey's. Wanda walked me through Bobby Mackey's from top to bottom. So the first place that I was taken was um, there is a strange... The way Bobby Mackey's is, it has been... Um, so this was the slaughterhouse and then it was built on and then it was built on and built 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 so some parts of the of the nightclub you can tell where like makeshift walls have been put in um, and underneath if you get to go in the basement where Zach supposedly had the possession you actually can see underneath there where there was sections that have been added on over the years when it was like resold and purchased to something else it's weird I could have swore I heard a fly in my ear and I know that there's no flies in here at all. That like buzzing, that like buzzes by your ear. Bobby Mackey's gives me the heebie-jeebies, I'm gonna be honest. I had uh, not the ple most pleasant experience there. <laughs> okay, so Wanda decided to take me up to who would have been known as either the head mobster or head gangster. His apartment is still to this day above Bobby Mackey's. So walking up the stairs, it's pretty sketch. They're old and 
I think they should probably be redone, <laughs> but they're not. So you walk up the stairs and you get into what it looks like is a makeshift apartment that has been built above Bobby Mackey's. It's obviously very old. So according to Wanda, this area is the original head mobster, head gangster's house. And he lived there basically 24 seven as the club was being ran. So I was shocked because there's a couch up there. There is bowling trophies, old bowling trophies. Um, and all kinds of other very strange things. They're very old, they're very filthy, dirty, like four inches of dirt is on them. And there's a bathroom. And inside of this bathroom is a toilet, a sink that is also very filthy, and a bathtub that is completely filthy, old, gross. So of course my question to Wanda was, why have you allowed this to be this way? Why are you keeping this here? Why don't you use this area as something else? Maybe even a dining area, I don't know. And Wanda said, he won't let us. And I'm looking around like, who? Who won't let us? So apparently, according to Wanda and Bobby Mackey for that matter, they have tried several times to kind of excavate this area, remove things from this area and it gets mad. Whoever this head gangster is or mobster um, will start lashing out, getting angry, getting violent, things will happen to them, things will be thrown. So they just ended up keeping everything exactly the way it was when Bobby Mackey purchased the property. Spill some of my ear. Spill some of my ear. Spill some of my ear. Wanda thinks that when the mobsters and gangsters owned this property that there were several dancers or women or whatever that had been murdered in this bathtub particularly. She thinks that if someone would accidentally get pregnant they would kill the women so that they wouldn't speak out against them regarding tax evasion and everything else that they had going on. So I was pretty creeped out the fact that they had kept that bathtub um, but she said she's very stern about the fact that they could not remove anything from that room or hell would basically break loose. So they kind of have it sealed off and just nobody goes up there. They say that that is his space and his place and they let him stay there. And if you don't bother him, he won't bother you. Although I did find out that um, most of the women, if they go in pregnant up into this area and walk down that staircase, that is the staircase that this energy likes to shove women down the stairs. So actually when we left the room, she asked us as the females and herself we had to hold on to the railing with both hands and walk down very carefully so that no one got injured. No one was injured, obviously, while we were there. So now we moved on to the actual club or, you know, night hall, if you will, with the dance floor and there's a stage. And I found it oddly extremely dark in there. I mean, I know a lot of pubs, like I've been to pubs, I've been to bars, I know what they're like, but this, for some reason, was like any light source, it would just, the light source would be sucked completely into darkness. It was very odd. I told you I didn't go there with any equipment. I did have, I think my iPhone at that point, it was like an iPhone 4 probably or 5. And so I did snap some pictures. So here are the photos I got. I could not get a clean photo without these strange swirly light anomalies that almost looked like fire. Um, that was in the location usually near the stage or on the dance floor. So while we were talking to Wanda, she was showing us this really old, um, it's like this really old money vault that they still have there. It's broken, it doesn't hold anything, they don't put anything in there. Um, but Wanda said that it was there from the mobsters, they would hold all of their cash inside of this vault. So in the room, um, basically they ask if, um, if anybody talks badly about the vault that you will get attacked by the mobster energies that are still there. So if you say something to the vault like, I'm going to steal all your money or I'm going to take this and run, they will attack you. You'll get physically assaulted with scratches and, and you'll bleed. Obviously we didn't say any of that, but as she was discussing the vault, because it's actually quite beautiful because it's so old, all of a sudden the mechanical bull went off twice and it's a bull that is not plugged into the wall. Wanda said that's their old bull 
um, that they used to use for like the bull riding events and it's not plugged in and it moved twice while we were in there, which is quite loud if you can imagine a mechanical bull moving by itself. So by this point, I was pretty already convinced, uh, you know, I'm a believer that there is energy here. Now the other strange thing that kept happening as we were in this area is the PA system or, you know, the speakers with the microphones and where they'll hook up their amps and their guitars, it kept going on and off about three times once again, and Wanda physically had to walk up onto the stage to turn it back off. So that was pretty interesting. And she would show us, you have to go all the way back here to actually shut it off. And she was kind of annoyed with it and because she kept having to really remove herself from the group and go back over there. So now from here, she took us onto the stage to go back behind the stage where the ladder sits for where the energy they believe of Johanna is, which is up on the catwalk walkway where girls would drop in from the ceiling, uh, you know, for like dancing poles and stuff like that. So out of my group, of course, there was only me that was brave enough to walk up the ladder. Wanda said that I was more than welcome to go up, which I did. And as I'm almost to the top, which by the way, is pitch black because it's like up in a ceiling and there's no light source whatsoever. She says, don't be afraid if Johanna, you know, pokes her head out at you because she loves when especially other girls come up there to visit her. And I was like, great, I'm like already there. You're telling me this as I'm going up into the hole. Great, like I'm waiting to turn and see something. I didn't, but um, I did snap some photos and I, interestingly, um, where I snapped the photos is at the very end of the catwalk. Johanna said, or Wanda says Johanna holds herself down there in that location. Interestingly, I took several photos in the same exact spot over and over, and I got several orbs in that exact spot. So that's very interesting to me, or light anomalies. So from there we came down, she showed us more of the bar area, um, still had strange energies in photos. I did not walk out of that place with one plain photo. So from there she did take us underground, which is supposedly where the satanic rituals took place, and I can see why. So there's basically almost barn doors that are right on the edge underneath, and underneath Bobby Mackey's they have an entire area I mean huge, it's the same like size of the inside of Bobby Mackey's, basically just with poles because it's all up on stilts. So they do store some stuff down there, but according to Wanda, they don't go down there very much. So certain areas of this are strange, like when you first walk in off to the left side, it looks like there's a little brick hut, honest to God, and she said it's been there, you know, they didn't build it. And she said inside of that hut, there is an energy that they call Santa Claus that basically hides and pops his head out, um, is short, kind of stout, fat, and looks like Santa Claus. Um, she says there hasn't been a lot of interaction, but that's basically where he lives, is inside of this strange brick hut that was built. So if you go along here on this side, on the right side, it's a very large and open, open area. You do see the wells, you come up to a couple of the wells, and then there's some really back rooms back in this area. She says she doesn't like to go back there. So I decided to go back there by myself, and I realized that there is a ton of dishes and china and people's belongings, and she basically said that they have tried to hire several crews several times to go in and remove this stuff because obviously it's just kind of clutter that's in the way. And she said that the, the workers will get injured or they'll leave and they won't come back. And so she said they stopped hassling with it at some point, they just decided to give up and say, I'm going to leave it here. So who knows whose belongings they are. Um, they're very old, they're covered in, once again, four inches of dust. And possibly that could have energies attached to just that alone. So now the further you go back, the darker it starts to get because you're getting kind of towards the middle of Bobby Mackey's underground. There is, it, there's no really floor, it's all dirt. So it's literally on the ground. So the further back you get, once you start getting towards like the dancing rooms, which is where they claim Johanna committed suicide, they do have a bit of a tile floor on there. But other than that, it doesn't really exist. So I did go into the dancing rooms. I believe there's two, one that's um, lit with a red color and one that's lit with like a violet blue color. 
Um, it's a very kind of sad, somber energy in there, and it, it is like the feeling of depression, of suicide, or, or life lost, I guess. So now there is the room of faces, which Wanda says that um, basically there's a bunch of faces on the wall. I hope that I have the pictures or at least some of the pictures where basically images of people or faces have popped up on the walls. As a skeptical paranormal investigator, you could easily say that this is matrixing. However, this is also the room that they claim the satanic rituals occurred in. She says there's a lot of really strange energies that they've interacted in there, including children, possibly from the slaughterhouse, and other things that have been summoned in. This is also the room that Zach was in that when he claimed he got the possession. There are candlesticks that are still out, and everything is basically organic to the way other groups have come in to investigate. I didn't like that room. It's one of those places that gives you that knot in your throat, where you feel like you're choking or like being being held down or something. I don't know. Um, it's very bizarre. It almost feels like you're stepping into a different realm when you go inside of that room. You can get nauseous, you can get dizzy, uh, especially when you're sensitive to energy. And there's some, well it used to be, she had doors and panels of wood that were against the walls. Um, probably just for excess space or you know if a door breaks or something they can take this um, wood and build it into something but for some reason I felt the sensation that there were things hiding behind those and like there are little corners that they could peek out and I felt like that and she said that they had captured hands like someone's holding on to the boards on the side and she said there's a lot of strange energies in that room I believe it I really do believe it um, she showed me basically the whole underground. Uh, it's a very strange. There's an area that Carl claimed that he found Johanna's um, journal. They, Carl never produced that to anyone, so no one really knows what happened to that because he was living at Bobby Mackey's 24-7. I don't know how he did it. And um, it's just a very strange place. I also had Wanda take me to the back of Bobby Mackey's, which is where the the river is, which is incredibly powerful and raging. So just having an energy source alone is that river. Plus on top of that, the railroad tracks behind Bobby Mackey's, I mean, they are right there. So you can imagine even if it used to be bars, how many people would get drunk and stumble on the railroad tracks and pass out and get hit? So I mean, I think that the deaths on this property are, I don't even think people know. I don't think anyone will ever know how many deaths actually occurred at Bobby Mackey's or what was a slaughterhouse to Bobby Mackey's. There's also a women's bathroom or a men's bathroom, which I think Nick had gotten scared in Ghost Adventures. Um, Wanda let me go in here. Um, she said there used to be stairs that went basically from probably the mobsters area, that like upper deck, down into this floor and probably down into the basement where the dancers were. Um, at some point, those stairs were taken out. But as Wanda and I went in there, Wanda goes, I want you just to, just to be quiet and listen. And all of a sudden, it sounded like someone was walking down the stairs and there are no stairs there. So these energies are very predominant at Bobby Mackey's and they have no shame in showing themselves. Wanda has, you know, opened up Bobby Mackey's for about seven to eight hundred dollars per night for a ghost hunting group to go in. I didn't have to pay, luckily. Although Zach did interview Wanda on Aftershocks discussing Bobby Mackey's, and he asked her, you know, kind of a question of did did she think it was right. Um, that she's kind of sold herself to the devil regarding uh, letting people come in and, and run the place and um, do whatever they want. My opinion is it's probably a lot like um, the Lizzie Borden house. I think energies might just be tired of, of dealing with constant interaction, especially if it's dark interaction. 
Wanda did not set up a lot of rules when she first allowed people to come in to and investigate. I think she they they just saw dollar signs, you know, with letting people come in for a night. And I think that a lot of people did some bad things that were provoking and a lot of dark things that went on. And more people started getting injured. And I think at some point they kind of either slowed down um, the investigations or completely halted them. I know it's a big rumor that Bobby Mackey believes that um, he doesn't believe in ghosts, that he's said that on film, that he's not a believer, um, and he doesn't think anything's there. But I just highly disagree with that, to be honest. I disagree for several reasons. One is the fact that the gangster's bedroom upstairs is still sitting the exact same way. Two, they still have all kinds of trash underneath the ground. And if a person that wanted to really get rid of that stuff that was an actual skeptic or in this case a non-believer, they would just get rid of it. Even if workers couldn't do it, then they would go in and do it themselves. So I don't believe that he is a non-believer. I think he tries to portray that himself that way. Um, he also comes from an older generation when paranormal wasn't as accepted in society as it is today because it's on every channel practically. So I think maybe he's afraid that if he came out as a believer in paranormal that it would affect his music career in some way or maybe even the business of Bobby Mackey's. His wife hasn't stepped in, you know, on foot in there since she was actually hurt being pushed down the stairs while she was pregnant. So I can't help but think that there's no way that these people can be non-believers or skeptics. Wanda is not doing the tour guiding as far as I know that someone has kind of stepped in for her place since she's been going through the cancer issue. I do think Johanna is there. I felt her energy for sure. Um, I think she gets excited when women are around because it seems like for Wilder and the nightclub, it means it seems to be more male dominated. I um, got followed home from Bobby Mackey's. That was kind of how it ended. So obviously I was there for a few hours because this took a while. Plus we kind of did an amateur ghost hunt to see if we could investigate. I did capture a couple EVPs. Hopefully I um, have them and I'll be able to find them and add them. If not, I'm sorry. I was followed home by what I think was a kind of a gangster. So we were back in the hotel room at Lexington and we heard basically what sounded like the television being drug across this giant um, like dresser type of deal. And it was one of those really old box style um, televisions. So when it moved, it was very loud and you could hear the plastic being drug. I also woke up to the light being turned on and off in the bathroom constantly. It wasn't going to stop. I f I don't know if the next thing that I experienced, if I was in um, like sleep paralysis or if I was actually awake, that's just me being completely honest. But I did remember seeing what looked like to be an Italian man standing over me um, with kind of a round face um, and like some stubble growing. And he was in my face. Like it was a very intimidation kind of um, stare down that he was having. And then I woke up again remembering I did see the actual light being flipped on and off. But whatever phase I was in, I don't know if I was asleep or awake when I saw this face, but it was very predominant in my face. So of course, um, I wasn't the only one that heard it. It woke up other people that were in the room and um, we all kind of started saying the St. Michael prayer and asking it to leave and it did. I do think Bobby Mackey's is very haunted. I think there are several different scenarios going on in there. I think Johanna feels like she's trapped and can't move on. And I think that when the nightclub is fully functioning, she thinks that she is supposed to go stage perform for the night. I think that the gangsters are guarding that property with their life. I think that they have no intention of ever leaving and they probably don't even know that they're gone. I think there's been some really dark stuff happen down in the underground and in the basement. I think it could be related to the children being abducted from, you know, being used in the slaughterhouse. I think it could be from um, not only the animals being killed in the slaughterhouse, but pro possibly sacrifices if there was satanic rituals going on down there. And when dark stuff happens with black magic or Satanism, um, it, it's like a stain that never goes away. It, it creates this plasma stain that never goes away. And then if you get people coming in 
to provoke it and try to get it to come out and at them and you know maybe even using other satan rituals to pull it out it's just going to keep getting more dominant and more dominant and it's eventually going to take over the whole space um, it's like a thick black tar is what I like to think of it as. So I do think that is also in the basement as well. I think there's a lot of stuff at this place. And it is the only place that I also said that I will not go back. Um, there's... That I will not go back. Um, there's... There's... Each room or each place in Bobby Mackey's, whether it's underground or in the bathroom with the stairs or in the gangster's apartment, each space feels different. And as an empath, it makes me sick going from literally four steps this way to four steps that way and I feel a different emotion that quickly or I'm surrounded by different energy that quickly and that is why I don't want to go back because it's it's like being on a roller coaster the whole time you're in there. You never know what you're going to hit next and um, that energy is just too much. It's very dominant no matter what the energy is. If it makes you sick or makes you happy or is angry and dark, it will make you sick because it's like a lash up and down. I, although I love the Stanley Hotel and I know that Lizzie Borden has been turned into a bed and breakfast, I don't condone investigators going to Bobby Mackey's. There weren't rules set up, like a lot of places they'll say, please don't bring Ouija boards or please don't do any sort of Satan rituals or please don't use tarot cards or they will. A lot of places will have different rules for their investigating. Please don't do hoodoo or voodoo here. Please no black magic and satanic rituals. If we find out, you'll be kicked out and removed. And Bobby Mackey's had no rules set up and now there has been probably hundreds of people that have gone in there to do investigations and God knows what kind of energy has been stirred up and changed and invoked, I guess you could even use. So I bet it's even worse now and um, it was bad then and I'm just not interested in, in going there to be honest. I think that um, it may be contaminated with a lot of bad energy. Uh, yeah, it's a place that you'll get a ton of evidence but you're also gonna get followed home. It could be permanent. You're gonna get nightmares. You can get injured, seriously. Um, a couple of people that were in my group the day that we went kept tripping on nothing. Literally, they were tripping on nothing. There was nothing there to trip them and it kept reoccurring and reoccurring. So I think that they are out for, for blood. I think that they're soul collectors. I know that sounds weird and dark and like Hollywood, but I really do. That's the feeling I get from Bobby Mackey's is whatever energy is in there is just soul collecting. And it's like, I don't know how many it needs. And eventually, whenever it gets to the number that it needs, it's gonna be enough for whatever it, it wants to do. But it's damaging. I know that. It's dark and it's damaging. And I didn't like it. I really didn't like it. After the experience with it following me home too, I think that was one of the most dark energies I've had follow me home. Um, I wouldn't say demonic, I would say dominating, and um, which the gangsters probably were if they were murdering women back in the day. And I didn't like that. I didn't like that energy at all. I didn't like that it was able to manipulate the lights so much at ease. So much at ease which tells me that they have that they really reserved and resourced a way to withhold their energy and develop the energy to be able to do something like that continually and to move an old box tv that i wasn't the only one that heard it that's no joke if you get the opportunity should you go there it's one of those locations where i think that it's a bucket list if you're a seasoned investigator but if you're not seasoned and you're not in control of your focus and you're being an empath and a pretty damn good investigator, I would say you need to skip it because it's one of those places that if you're an amateur going in there acting like a fool and provoking and disrespecting the location and the energies, they're gonna make you pay for it one way or another. People have asked Wanda and Bobby Mackey's in general, if they think her cancer could be related um, to working in such a dark environment and allowing, you know, people to come in and provoke and, you know, respond to these energies in a negative way. And 
Um, I don't know what my opinion is on that. That's been a big rumor, you know, of people like Ryan Buell claimed he had gotten cancer and a lot of people thought that it was because that he had worked on demonic cases. Well, obviously Ryan Buell, you know, we know that he didn't have cancer and we know that he was lying to embezzle money from his fans, but he actually had a drug addiction. So you can't blame everything on the paranormal, including cancer. But I do know, you know, Zach had, had brought that up during Aftershocks. And um, all I have to say is that I hope Wanda gets well. And I think that they need to can the investigations there. Um, because I don't think anyone except seasoned people should be going in there. And then there should still be rules set up. One thing Wanda was very clear with me was when you go in with your group to Bobby Mackey's to investigate, if someone provokes, because she'll let anyone provoke, whoever the weakest link is in the group will be the one that's injured the most. And I, I asked her what was her definition of, of weakest link. And she said, well, it depends. It could mean if there's some sort of untreated mental illness, if someone's suffering from anxiety or depression, if someone is just a weak person in general and you know doesn't speak a lot and kind of stays to themselves, whoever the weakest link is in one way or another, that person's going to be the one that they attack. She said that to me several times. And for some reason, that statement being repeated was really overwhelming to me because... Um, that tells me that that's when dark stuff is really involved and you know I think interacting with the other side is amazing I think that the veil keeps lifting more and more and I think we're only on the verge of the edge of what could be possible with this industry but I also think that certain things shouldn't be messed with and this is one of those things what do you guys think do you guys know the history of Bobby Mackey's have any of you guys been to Bobby Mackey's um, are you going to go to Bobby Mackey's? Because I know I have a lot of followers on the East Coast. Make sure you guys give me a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure you follow me on social media, and I will catch you guys next time.